Kimhani Buddha or Kimhani Gyanaspa. Kimhani Chitari Buddha was born October 19, 1996. Today, um, supposed to be um, a blessed day, a resurrection day, but um, I'm being honest um, with the world and with myself and with God that I'm, I'm, I'm angry, I'm real angry. I'm angry at society. And I'm also angry at God, but God understands me why I'm angry because he knows my feelings and he knows my pain. And the only other people that knows his pain is um, his mothers and fathers that lose children like me. I'm also um, still grieving on um, the loss of my 21 year old, only two years ago, passed away in a car accident. So, with Kimani's grief, makes it even big. His grief is like so much to bear. And you could only imagine when I go to lighting candles for not only one kid, but two. I used to say, I'm going to the cemetery to see. Jamal, no, I didn't have to say I'm going to the cemetery to see my kids. And um, he could say I'm strong, but I don't think I'm strong. You are strong, sister. You are strong, sister. I'm really right out. I'm willing to find out the strength that I have to make sure that Kimani gets justice and also all the other kids that face a situation like this. And I want to make one correction of um, the speaker that just came off. Kids are kids that are here we go, teenagers. Not just black kids. We got Caucasian kids too, we got Hispanic kids. All kids go through things, but especially in these neighborhoods, you know, everyone is considered as gangsters. Their pants are down low, you know, they're out a little bit late at night. So I'm speaking not just for Kimani, I'm speaking for all kids, all teenagers out there today that just want to live in their own world, you know, and do what they want to do as teenagers, yes. A lot of them go through a lot of infections with the law, infections with their parents, infections with family members and friends. But we all have to remember we were teenagers too. And we have to grow up and some of those growing up is called growing pains. Um tonight. I want to be Kimani, Kimani's voice to say, please, please help me. Please bring justice to me. I've been falsely accused because I know my son, I know Kimani. I search Kimani pockets at night. Yes, I find liars at times. He denies, say he doesn't smoke, but I know what Kimani was going through. I find condoms in Skimani. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I find condoms. Be safe. Be safe. That, be safe. That, that, um, Smart kid. That is there for weeks. You only get to use them sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm always wild up his weekend. I was like, you know, it's curfew. Sometimes I'll call him, I'll text him sometimes. And in some of his lives, he said, Mom, I'm on the block already, stop burning up your head. Mom, I'm around the corner. Oh, Mom, wanting, did you cook? You know, <laughs> I'm like, you know, outside all day, you can't find something to eat. <laughs> no, Mom, nothing tastes like yours. <laughs> Come on, he came to me two weeks before this happened to him. He said, Mom, I've got a job for you. He said, um, the guy that used to work in the restaurant on 15th Turn, I'm not cooking here no more, Ma. And I want all my friends in detention with food. And I didn't take a job. He also brought me an ointment in a box that I didn't care to look at at the time. And it was just when I fell in the cemetery this week at his funeral. I realized what the ointment was about. It was for my knee. Because he knew I had a bad knee. All these years I've been struggling with that you brought me to creep. No, you tell me what gangster. What gangster would think about his mom like that? What gangster gives his baby, 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 g
gets to come home at night and throw them all over the room. What gets to spread his bed in the morning? All I want for Kimani was to have a peace of mind, the freedom to live, the freedom to grow. I used to pressure Kimani a lot about school because the last couple of report cards wasn't so beautiful, you know? His grace was dropping. And then I was on him all the time, all the time. He said, come on, you got to step up the plate. You got to step up, be the man in here. If I was you, and I see my mom going through so much, I would have, I would have tried to be the head of the household and set the plate up. And he was like, mom, you just don't know. You just don't know. But he never expected me. I said, mom, I guess I'm working on all of that. And Saturday passed, which makes it two weeks we came out of We killed on the meal on my table. And he tells me that came on here, got me over 30 credits already. And he's only the 10th grade. And he knew that um, sometimes when he was late, he was taking an extra class just to please me. And he just never tell me. He also told me he wanted to go to a school downtown Brooklyn that um, you would have got out of school earlier. I said, no, you probably just want to go here because your friends are going there. He said, no, mom, it's just me. I want to get the grades fast. I want to get into high school fast. I don't want to get out of there when it's too late. My son, Jamal, that passed away, he used to be interested in building the, you know, architect work. And Kimani used to, um, Jamal used to write on um, projects for school. And his main goal was to build houses for older people and low-income families. So when Kimani chose to go to um, Urban Assembly of the Arts and Construction all the way to 50th Street in Manhattan, I didn't know why. I said, why did you choose a school in Brooklyn? He never told me why. And then I found out that Kimani wanted to do the same thing as his brother. Low income housing for poor families and older people. He never does chores at home. <clears throat> no, you just give him the garbage, he left it in the hallway. Then he's going to take it, sit down in the hallway. But when he comes here to his neighborhood, all the older people, whether it's their lunch bag, their supermarket bag, whatever they got to carry, keep in mind, you'll have them all the way. I don't know what to say to make any other mothers understand what I'm going through. But I'm telling you tonight, no matter what your teenager is doing, you never come off of it with them. You stay on it with them. You guide them. You support them. And no matter how late they ring that bell, Open that door because I've been waiting 21 days now. I sat, I sat up in my couch 21 days now. 21 days waiting to hear my bell ring. Hoping Kimani will ring the bell. I'm not going crazy. Not yet. I'm not going crazy. But I'm still waiting. But I built to be just for him to say, Mom, it wasn't me. I just let them go somewhere and I'm not back now, you know? So whenever they ring that bell, no matter how angry you are again, open the door. I waited by night to come out many times. I waited. I had sticks. I had the kitchen spoon. I have shoes. I have everything ready for him. You know what my other kids say? Mom, you know we ain't going to kick you nothing. But they don't understand. It's not do I'm not going to do kick you anything. It's just as soon as he gets there, I turn to the corner. I always look to myself. And I say, thank you, Jesus, that he made it home. Yes? I can understand how people feel towards him on this situation. He's been out there in the news. He got a little minor fracture with the law. And he knows what it was going on. He knows what he was facing, and he was trying not to face that anymore. And that's the reason
reason why he turned away from the cops. I told him, come on, you have a family court case. And if you have a family court case, the judge owns you. You know, it's not like a regular case that, you know, you could just say you get probation and you don't get time, so whatever. A family court case, the judge is like your parent, he becomes your parent. He checks up on your grades, he checks up on your attendance, he checks up on your well-being in every way. I said, Kimani, if you get another arrest, the judge is going to take you away. He said, man, no, we're supposed to move. I don't want to live nowhere else but home with you. And I moved. After facing a 15-month situation of uncomfortableness with my children, no space of our own, we moved into the apartment on Tuesday. He might have spent only three nights there. I haven't slept in my bed 21 days because I don't want to feel comfortable. <laughs> Snacks no more. I don't want to feel pleased. I don't take regular showers because I don't want to be fresh. All I want is an answer of why. Why you take my son from me? Why you didn't give him a chance to get that diploma? Let him even be a father one day so I could you know, raise his kids. And my heart goes out to everyone that's here to support. I want the resources, and if you guys have the resources to make it better, to make even the community a better one. And we need not only just to do this for Kimani, we need to get along as black people. We need to stop hating on each other, hating on each other's success, you know? And first you move up the neighborhood, when you go to church, then you want to think they're rich. They're driving a new car, when you think they win some type of money. Just praise each other every time one of them reach up. Just praise them. And the best is going to come back down at us. I want Kimani to be remembered as a 16 year old student who was loved by his family, who has sisters and brothers, nieces and nephews, cousins, friends that really, really miss him, really, really want to like celebrate life with him for a long time and it was short taken, you know. I gotta share with you guys, um, as I say again, I'm not going crazy, not yet. I was on my phone outside a few minutes ago and I was a distance away from the corner and I saw a little boy in the corner. He was wearing the same hoodie that Kimani wears and the New York hat. And I know for some reason he was standing here for a reason. I felt him, he wasn't there, I didn't felt him. Because I called him and I asked him to give me a hug. But when I seen him, he told him it was Kimani. And I just wish that it was like a miracle. You know? And then I would have said, yeah, but Kimani right here, he's not there. <laughs> I'm not the only person or parent that knows a child. So I know everyone knows that knows a child knows what the burden feels like and what the pain feels like, the guilt. For one minute, I don't want to laugh. If I laugh, I feel guilty that I'm laughing. Little kids give me jokes, my grandkids, and I, I try to pull him and laugh. Because I don't want Kim Ali to be laughing. <laughs> I don't want him to know that I'm hurt every day about him. I don't know what to do with this life because I don't want to wait around and lose another child. I don't want to watch no more than that. Not go 
going to rest. And I pray that you guys stand up with me and do this for Kimani and Chantel, Romani, and all the other kids that have been brutalized. And maybe killed just like Kimani that you don't even know about. We want to fight for them today. And we want to bring justice for them. And thank you everyone for coming out. Thank you so much. Thank you.